You are warm and welcome to our today's session on financial accounting brought to you in association with Magna Technologies Limited. With you today is to know as Philemon who will be taking you throughout this course unit. So before we begin, we shall first look at an overview of what we intend to cover and in our topic one, we shall look at the introduction to accounting, which basically, basically covering what we anticipate to cover in the entire course. So here we have the key accounting terms and majorly we look at what the definition of accounting is, what an accounting equation will be, the accounting policies, the assets and liabilities, and then the capital. So when we come to what accounting really is, by definition, by dictionary, it refers to the process of identifying, measuring, recording, and communicating the financial information that permits the use of decision making. So if you are to look at that part, cover major looks at four different items. One is the identifying, the measuring, recording, and the communicating, which all end up informing the end user on what to do and not to do. Then we have an accounting equation. The accounting equation is a mathematical description of the relationship between the assets, the liabilities, and capital. So in our financial the accounting equation, if I can use a different color, we have that assets plus liabilities equal to capital. So we shall explore this more in detail when we come to the financial statements. When we are constructing especially the balance sheet, we shall have a clear overview of what the accounting equation is, but at the moment, we can leave at that, that. Then the accounting policies, these are more like laws or rules which govern us on what to do when we're preparing the financial statements. So these are like the basis, the conversions that have been set up by the accounting bodies to be followed when or any time you try to develop the financial statements. I hope I'm not being too fast, but we can move on to what, a, what an asset is. So from definition, an asset is anything that brings value to an organization, whereas a liability is anything that, that, that is an obligation to the party or to the organization which need to be cleared. So if we can say that an asset is more of a positive and the liabilities are negatives. For capital, capital, these are resources that are put into the business. This is like when you choose to invest, what do you bring to the business? That's what we can term to as capital. Yeah, for, so these are our major terms that will be coming across throughout the entire course. And yeah, you don't you may not have to cram them, but you surely need to know what they actually mean before we move on to the full topics. But for now, we can. So here we do a deep dive into what accounting is. As we are aware that accounting is broad and therefore it has been subdivided into areas of different specializations. So we have things like, let's say we have like tax accounting, we have financial accounting, we have bookkeeping, we have cost accounting, we have management accounting, we also have auditing, all falling into accounting. So if we are to look at the definition of each, so tax accounting majorly looks at the determination of the firm's tax liability and there we can have like taxes like VAT, the customs duty, the payee, the corporation taxes. Those all taxes when being handled by a person we can we can term that person or that individual as a tax accountant. Then we have the financial accounting. In most cases, people refer accounting to financial accounting. Yes, they may not be wrong, but it's also a branch of the accounting, like it does not cover everything that accounting does. So here we have said that this is the like we are defined what accounting is. It's the collection and the processing of accounting data and reporting it to the interested parties 
inside and outside the farm so meaning that information received is used internally or externally that's what we need to know when we are defining the financial accounting on the contrary when we look at management accounting we have that that information that is developed and come up by the accountant is only used for internal consumption so that's one of the difference that we need to note when heading it out into this course then bookkeeping so i can't say that bookkeeping is an account it's like accounting but yeah in the first step the data entry the vouchers the all that stuff that we do when registering in the books we call that bookkeeping the yeah, information there does not a decision ma making per se but when analyzed by an accountant that's when it makes sense and and we can consider it as an accounting information we can't omit it it's the first step in any accounting so it falls in there next we have cost accounting this looks at the firm's cost of production identifying ways on how to reduce the costs with the aim of making profits management accounting i think we had touched about it and then finally auditing so auditing looks at the verification of the transactions that you have made above in the financial accounting books are they true do they present a true representation of the business so generally we can say the aim is to make sure that the company's state of affairs present a true and a fair view that's how we can sort of define auditing we shall go into detail it has a full cost unit on its own but for now we can stop on that it's just this is just an overview of what we expect to cover so in our key takeaways as you can see here we are required to differentiate between financial accounting and bookkeeping this is our homework per se but we had covered this like i told you above what bookkeeping is and what financial accounting is then we have the difference between cost accounting and management accounting maybe more information on what management accounting is we may have not captured it well this involves a deal of using the accounting information that has been developed from the financial accounts above to aid decision making by the top management or by the managers on a day-to-day -day basis yep thank you and we can proceed to the next slide so here in our slide we look at the forms of business entity like you can see there are different forms which are which businesses do exist in one we have the sole proprietorship this is where a business is owned by a single individual so from his we can say that he meets all the costs he starts up the business runs it and operates it all by himself that's the first entity under sole proprietorship then partnerships this is where two or more people ideally two or less than 20 so within that gap where people come together and agree to start up the business this is more like sole proprietorship in other features but the difference is that here the pattern has come up with an agreement which we call the partnership deed and this deed guides the operation of the of the partnership so in case of a scenario where one of the partners decides to leave that deed is invalid and void therefore the remaining partners have to enter into a new agreement this is similar to when they admit a new person into their partnership you must have to draft a new partnership deed so what is this partnership deed this partnership deed defines like the number the i can't call them shares can let's say the contribution of each person and how they will be sharing their profits or losses it can be like each person represents one part one one share sort of 
but I think let's avoid using the word of the word share in partnerships. It will bring a little bit of confusion. So we can yeah we can ideally say you own two k let's say like if you own some 20k what's the proportion of your 20k to the rest of the partnership so if that was portion is what your profit will be earning yeah don't worry we shall go more into the details when we come to the topic of partnerships but for now i think that's the a good background to move on to then we have the limited liability companies as well as the private public private limited liability companies so here these are companies that are registered and uh, main the main thing here is the limited liability this means that in case of a loss partners or the shareholders property is not touched on like in the Solan partnership, in case of a loss, partner's property can be used to cover those losses. But in limited liability companies, they are an artificial person, so their property of the shareholders cannot be used to cover losses of the company. So that's one of the aim why we would need to have our companies registered to gain that element of limited liability. So as you can see, we have the public and private. So public are the companies that public are list to the to the general population, whereas private are the ones that stay within the few individual people. So in most cases, the private they can go up to fifty people. Beyond that, they tend to be more public. For public, these companies usually list their items on the stock exchanges and they are owned by very many people per se if i can say that but they are all controlled by the board which is selected by the shareholders in the annual general meetings that's a little bit of overview on the private on the public limited liability companies so what do we have to cover here like to know in detail so in our free time we need to look at the characteristics and forms of each of these how do they exist like we have said sole property ship one person two to twenty for partnerships then liabilities are listed on the stock exchanges so we need to go into the details the notes are provided on our website if you have enrolled you can download them for the full clear overview we also need to look at our the private the benefits and limitations of each as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each that's the overview of the business entities and how they do exactly all right and this slide we look at the elements of financial reports and if you may recall from our introductory slide we defined an accounting equation that this is equivalent to assets equaling to capital plus liabilities and this is our accounting equations and we defined asset as a positive and liability as a negative to the company because it would need to meet it's an obligation that would need to be met by the company whereas an asset is something that brings value it can be in very it can be a tangible it can be non-tangible but all in all as long as it brings value to, to the company it's an asset Whereas capital, these are resources that are brought into the organization to start it up or to boost it up. This, like I'd say, the uh, accounting equation is more reflected when we begin using the financial statements, especially the balance sheet, where we shall have assets on one side and liabilities on one side on the other side, in addition to the capital. We shall look more into the details in the next in the next topic of financial statements. For now, giving you an overview of what it is. Whereas an income statement, this looks at more of like at the cash flows, the incomes earned from the different activities, the sales revenue, 
all that stuff will be discovered under the income statements and when brought all together they are what we term as the financial statements they are more than these and these are like the common names that we use but they have the re-accounting names like a statement of financial position to mean the balance sheet the major thing that we will cover up in the balance sheet is the rule of double entry double entry that's where we have the two sides of debit and credit meaning that if you spend money here you must bring in something here like let's say if you go to buy furniture your money will reduce but you bring furniture to your organization so that's the rule of double entry when we reduce here we must gain something here if we reduce here we must gain something here so all in all the two sides must be balancing at any time t don't worry we shall cover all these details with time uh we the next idea we we'll need to look at what really makes up the good accounting information we have talked about the financial reports how we talk to the management how they will use it to make decisions so what really makes up the, the accounting information to be that so one is that it should be really understandable like if you read through you should be able to make meaning of them like if it's a balance sheet let it be a balance sheet read through know that these are assets these are liabilities this is capital they have got to be separated well and organized well such that it's understandable relevance they should be relevant like you can't use the information from let's say three years back to determine what is happening today i'm not saying it's completely out but let it be relevant if you are looking at quick moving items then that information will not be useful to you it won't be relevant at that moment but it can be relevant if you are comparing the five-year performance so depending on the target audience your information has got to be relevant reliability it has got to be trusted like someone does not have to have doubt on what your information really presents then the comparability ideally this means that your information that you use the information that you prepared should be able to be compared to someone else someone else's information or i can say if you prepare that information by yourself and someone else prepares that information separately but as long as it's on the same organization same data you're supposed to have the same information like the output should be the same that's the idea of comparability and timely then timely if we need information for one year let it be for one year let it not be outside if it's needed today it might not be needed tomorrow that's the idea of timely as we wrap up we need to look at who the users of these financial statements are and of course first of all that's the management it's really the number one use of these financial statements we have the government the revenue authorities they are also one of the most common users and the rest are here roughly everyone is a user of financial statements and they use it for different information like let's say if you want to go to a bank to get a loan they will need to check how you have been performing previously your competitor per se might need to look at how are you doing this how are you performing this can i do better than you so your competitor is one of your users that user of your financial information the capital markets like you said if you're a public company and you are listed your financial statements will also be public and available to the people to aid make the decisions these people are what are whom we call the investors or the shareholders you need to read through and then make a decision on what to do and many more people will use your information finally as we do a recap let us look at what what have we really covered in this session can you as an individual differentiate between who a cost accountant is or who a management account 
is can you define the different forms of a business can you highlight the elements of a financial statement and maybe what's the role of an accountant in an organization if you are able to answer all those you don't have to be perfectly right but you know you're on the right path to becoming an accountant yep that was our sort of introductory more questions on the accountant more research that we can do it's part of simple things that we can go through who an accountant is what what are his responsibilities what are the drivers of a sustainable organization success and what are the fundamental principles of being an accountant so you can read through this we shall pick up from there in our next topics but make sure you do some little research there such that in the next topic we are at par you can get us on our website at www.magna.com enroll and pick all the information and data the videos on each topic we have exclusive information you can also have our we shall also be having the chat with the lecturers you can be logging in on the specified dates that will be shared on your emails for those who have enrolled you'll be able to get all that data you can tell a friend to tell a friend you are on the right path so in our next lecture in our topic two we shall look at the financial reporting framework and i can say we will have real started thanks for attending it has been a pleasure having you in our first lecture it has been filmed on day. all right thank you and have a nice day